So, welcome everyone. Um, we are a select gathering this afternoon, and I think it's very telling that last night we were having to turn the public away um, because it was a sold out event. Um, and from my point of view, this is why I believe that the Portland Centre for Integrative Medicine is necessary to start to wake up and support uh, doctors and healthcare professionals to a new way of working. So today is uh, the first in what we hope might be many education offers around integrative medicine. And the Portland Centre and a number of very diverse organisations would like to be part of this movement for change in healthcare. In the States, Andy Vile has been a champion for integrative medicine and set up the centre in Arizona. He started off with 10, 15 healthcare professionals. Now he trains 100. And all of those people going out are creating this change. There's now an academic consortium for integrative medicine in the USA. And this is a definition, just in case any of you weren't sure. So integrative medicine reaffirms the importance of relationship between practitioner and patient, focuses on whole person care, is informed by evidence, and also draws together lifestyle, healthcare, disciplines right across the range to achieve optimal health and healing. I wanted to just play briefly a video of um, a patient of mine and she just came into clinic with this tree of life. So you'll see me quickly putting up a video um, because I, I just so wanted to capture what she said. So it's just a very short video. I'll just play it for a couple of minutes. So I hope you could hear, but what, would, what did you notice about that? What was she saying, that some key things? There's no one particular thing that fulfills all her needs, really. So that's Whether crucial. So there's, there's not one thing that fulfills her needs. Good. What else did you pick up? She said it's not for one to criticize the other. So this is what integrative medicine is about, not for one to criticize the other. And for her, the glue is homeopathy, but it could be anything. It could be her church, osteopathy, you name it. There may be many ways for her to find the way of connecting her mind and body together. And what else does she say? And I say to her, what is it like when all these things come together? What does she say? It would be. It would be. It would be good. 
So we, we, we have like a challenge on our hands at the moment, I believe, to provide the care that Rena would, would love. So I do get excited when I see things like integrative cardiology, integrative orthopedics. Um, these are the kind of future that I think might start to meet Rena's needs. This is the King's Fund back in 2013, saying collectively the task of the commissioners in the UK is to deliver a sustainable healthcare system. And I think one of the things we're really aware of is that it isn't feeling sustainable at the moment. For those of you who were here last night at the public engagement lecture, it was fantastic to see some of the science and research behind our loss of connection to nature and how that's creating chronic stress, chronic inflammation. But as Dr. William Bird said, the, the problem is almost a bit too easy for doctors. And we'll, we'll look at why that might be. But again, the King's Fund say that our patients are the greatest untapped resource in the NHS, patient engagement. And one of the things that kind of easy, even gets obvious setting up these talks is the public are ready, uh, but for us as healthcare professionals and complementary therapists, maybe not so. I thought this was a fantastic picture that one of the medical students drew for something called Whole Person Care, which Dr. Trevor Thompson runs in the Bristol University. But you can see here this heroic doctor throwing the lifeline to this patient who's been in the abyss with a whole range of problems. And there's a sense for me of, should we get to this point? Or should he be in the abyss with the patient, working our way out together? So this is one of the problems, is that the way that we deal a lot of the time with uh, major problems is using pharmaceuticals. And we're now at the stage where those pharmaceuticals are being peed out into the environment, into the water, into the birds are absorbing it. What was fascinating is Dr. Marian Steiner described how uh, a piece of research was done here in Bristol asking 2,000 people about their use of medication. And they said that they either, about 28% said they either flushed it down the toilet or gave it to friends. <laughs> so the idea that the public want this, um, I had a personal experience of going to a cardiologist with cardiac arrhythmia and he wanted to put me on flecainide. Now, flecainide is a pretty dangerous drug. I've used it in many ways. So I s looked at him nervously and I said, do you think there's anything else I could do? And he said, oh, no, no, you're a busy woman. Um, and I realized that I had to take the prescription and make him think I was going to um, use it. And then I went away, I reduced my caffeine, I dropped my hours at work, and I started a meditation practice. So that's one of about five drugs that I could be on. So this afternoon, uh, we're going to pull together many experts in the field of integrative medicine. So Fiona Hamilton, who um, is the lead for arts and healthcare for the Portland Center, is our poet in residence. We're also going to meet Diana Bruce, who is a cardiologist. Um, but who likes apples? No, she's been, uh, she's been recommending uh, holistic approaches for some time. We're also going to have the opportunity ourselves to experience Tai Chi, yoga, laughter yoga. In other words, movement is good for us, as we learnt last night. Our mitochondria needs shaking up. We're also going to hear from Helen Cook, nutrition lead for the Portland Centre, about some of the evidence base for cardiovascular health. Duncan Still and Catherine Zolman, part of our education team, are going to talk about online learning and what's uh, in the future. And very importantly, um, a, a client patient is going to talk about their experience. We've got uh, Dr. Morris, Andrew Morris, known as Boris, is going to talk about the heart and the mind and how we connect and how we beautifully stress ourselves.